Welcome back. We're talking about ways to deal with stress, and some people actually resort to pulling out their own hair. So Dr. Scott Bowden is here to explain how common this condition is and what can be done to try and fix it. Good morning. Thank you so Hi. much for being here. Good morning, Stephanie. I'm so glad to, to be here to talk with you. Of course. So this is called hair pulling or Tri trichotillomania. So trichotillomania is a it's a condition where people habitually pull hair sort of to relieve stress. Mm. It becomes uh, a problem if it continues and then you can actually have permanent hair loss. How common is this? Well, it's a little bit more common uh, than people expect. It's about three to five percent of women over the course of their lifetime will have some hair pulling. Uh, one to three percent of men. Uh, more common in children and adolescents, but often hair pulling is a habit. As a child, one grows out of that. It's not a problem until it becomes continuous and then you can have permanent hair loss. Yeah, we have some pictures of people who are actually impacted by this. Yeah. And you said it's stress typically that causes this or are there other things too? Well, uh, let's, let's, um, if we look at the photograph of the, yeah. of the, the gentleman, uh, there's, he's got some er, you know, early example of localized hair loss in the back of his head. So this is a patient with much more profound hair loss that she's been pulling for years. Um, this is a, a treated uh, this is what we can talk about in a, in a few minutes, but this is a woman who has had treatment oh. with, with hair transplantation. Um, but in terms of stress, it's, it's a sense of a, a relief that is achieved by pulling hair. There's a tension, there's an, um, a way to sort of seek relief by pulling hair, and it becomes a, a habit. Um, the treatment is not initially surgical. The treatment is trying to modify the behavior. Sometimes uh, men and women that have uh, habitual trichotillomania or hair pulling uh, will take medication for it and they'll see they'll seek therapy with a psychiatrist or a psychologist. That's usually a f most important to, to alleviate the symptoms and stop the pulling. Um, where I come in as a hair transplant physician is when a patient has been stable for at least a year or two there's not this sort of um, uh, urge to continue to pull, uh, then we can talk about how we can cure it. And uh, the cure is stop doing the treat, stop doing the pulling, and then ultimately implanting hair into the areas of loss. So the patient we looked at before, the woman who had s substantial loss over a number of years, um, when she was treated with transplant, it's a permanent solution. And what was her reaction after she got the transplant? I mean, that must be an amazing transformation. Oh, for it, you to it say. is. Actually, we, we can look at those pictures again of the woman before and after. Um, she, it was a tremendous sense of uh, relief for her because she went from wearing a hair system that she didn't like. Mm -hmm. There's a cure. You can conceal hair loss by um, by wearing a hair system or a wig, but uh, when this woman had a permanent uh, repair by transplanting that hair. That's her hair now and she, she's no longer wearing a wig and she's very satisfied with that. And how long does that hair last? That's forever. Really? The transplanted hair will grow forever. It's taken from the back of the head. As long as the woman or the man is no longer continuing to pull the hair, it's going to remain uh, and look natural forever. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Scott Bowden. I appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you. For more information, you can always head to our website, WTNH.com. Click on the On Air tab and just pull it down to the Good Morning Connecticut Weekend section.